Welcome everyone to our webinar on revolutionizing retail, a fresh approach to content creation and management with the help of AI. I am Magdalena and I'm here to moderate this webinar today and of course provide an introduction about the topics and speakers. Um, I hope you'll find this uh, webinar insightful um, and that you'll feel free to use the opportunity to ask uh, or engage with our speakers by submitting your any questions um, or discussion points using the chat option. Uh, we have a, a dedicated time at the end um, and a bit of a smaller uh, time mark, but uh, I'm uh, really hopeful that we can get uh, to a point to answer at least some of your questions. Um, so first, I would like to uh, introduce the main speakers who are joining us today. Uh, we start first with Nelson Galindo from um, Amazon Web Services or AWS. Um, he's an enterprise a technologist focusing uh, currently uh, and leading the business development for retail and uh, consumer goods in EMEA. Uh, previous to AWS, he had positions as a CIO in BAT in several countries and in SensoSuit in uh, La Latin America. We welcome next two representatives from Concord, uh, a long-standing woodwind partner in Europe. Um, Hilde Hache from the Netherlands and Paul Walker from the U United Kingdom. Um, they're both consultants uh, and, uh, and, and they're working directly and helping to solve complex uh, content creation and content management uh, uh, challenges faced by many organizations, uh, starting from publishers, media houses, to manufacturers and retailers. Um, and last but not least, certainly we have Hus van der Mond, uh, uh, who is the founder of Squadra, a machine learning company. Uh, he will showcase some interesting use cases and implementations of AI technologies within the retail uh, content management world. Uh, of course, Squadra machine learning uh, applies best in class data science and artificial intel intelligence technologies and helps automate processes around smart, smart uh, product and data management. Um, a lot of interesting use cases from uh, all parties involved. And um, yes, I'm looking forward to a, a very um, interesting session. To announce the agenda, uh, we start with, um, uh, with the technology uh, trends in retail and the impact of AI. And I'd like to ask uh, Nelson to uh, step on the stage and of course, uh, start uh, presenting you uh, and sharing his knowledge uh, and expertise in, in this uh, area. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Elena. Okay, so let me uh, go through some of these uh, trends that we're seeing in the in retail and consumer goods. Uh, first one is um, in terms of this market, this market is a growing market and that will reach um, around roughly 20 billion by 2028, but more than that figure, which is, which is important, this is uh, growing roughly at a 30% annual rate. So there is a lot of interesting different companies to see ways in which they can apply uh, gene generative AI and in general AI to their processes. There has been really a spike on usage uh, across the board. How this is impacting the different business, I mean, the, in retail. We're seeing that in terms of uh, adoption, probably the, the areas where you will see the most impact at the beginning will be marketing and sales. This will account for almost one third of the total impact. Uh, here, what we're seeing is that, that an impact, impact that goes between one, let's say, and 2% of the total revenue translated that into, let's say, cost saving. So the potential for impact of um, bottom line for retailers and consumer goods is, uh, is a very, uh, it's a very important number. So first impact will be marketing and sales. We also see this happening in software engineering that the tools will help a lot to improve and make uh, uh, software development much easier and give more tools to developers to move faster in terms of development. We're also seeing a um, big impact in terms of supply chain operation, although here the, the figure is, is quite small, but we're seeing that this number is changing a lot uh, and so we expect to see a lot of impact in terms of the things that you can do in supply chain and operations. And part of that is uh, also things that we have been uh, seeing in Amazon, how Amazon has been using 
supply chain um, in uh, sorry Gen AI in supply chain. How do we see this impact? Mostly the, the impact that we see, I mean, compared to uh, what we have seen in terms of automation in the past, here the impact will be in, let's say, more in the side of the knowledge worker. So people that actually use their uh, knowledge to perform work, they will see a boost in, in terms of their um, efficiency. I mean, how to apply, by applying this tool, they will be able to make the job faster, make analysis better, and reach a better conclusion. So we're seeing today many people is a, a, an executive level, management level, analyst level, that are trying AI to improve the work. And we're seeing that this is happening everywhere and is being uh, a lot. If you see in terms of the physical impact, we don't see that much today because I mean, mostly, um, I mean, to produce a meaningful impact in terms of uh, physical activities, we need a next generation of robots. I mean, the more humanoid robot that can, can use Gen AI to perform tasks. I mean, we don't have that generation yet. So short term, we see the impact on the, let's say more on the knowledge worker. And for the ones of you that are not very familiar to Gen AI, basically uh, today we're seeing two, of Gen AI, two type of Gen AI. One is the, the ability to, to uh, work with images. So I start from a, what we call a prom, a, a description. And based on that description, come up with an image like, like this one. I mean, a happy golden retriever wearing glasses and a hat. I mean, and you get the image of that dog generated uh, by the Gen AI engine. And the other one is the more text one that you're probably very familiar with, that is uh, about generating new content or analysis based on the prompt or the question that you launch to the, to, to the engine. So the combination of these two technologies are also the ones that will bring um, a lot of differentiation to retailers. And today we're seeing how this is being used by different retailers. And in terms of the stack that AWS is providing to customers, I think this is quite important. We have what we call three stacks. We start, start with our bottom layer, which is the, basically the, the GP, GPU or the silicon. I mean, the, the chip that actually do all the training and, and and uh, inferential, and we have the, this layer. We build our own silicon. Also, we see that this will be will, will be pretty important in the future as people look also for more competitive models in terms of pricing. Having own own silicon will help that a lot. And we also have this layer, middle layer, that allows you give you access to different engines, which is called uh, Bedrock, that uh, gives you the ability to the, the use different type of a lar large language model based on the type of challenge that you need to overcome. And at the top level, we were seeing the applications like the Code Whisper or Amazon Q. There are tools that immediately allows you to start using Gen AI without having to, to configure or uh, spend more time doing like a more setup of those solutions. A couple of examples that I have. One is uh, Amazon. Amazon is using for sellers a Gen AI solution that allows sellers to improve their product description. This also have, a, I mean, we have the human in the loop yet. so. You, the sellers can ask um, the, this engine to provide a product description and they will assess if the description is good for them and they will publish this uh, uh, description. You know, in e-commerce, and this is key because I mean, better description means better conversion. So this is a way to help sellers to improve their conversion for products. Another example here is uh, using uh, Gen AI to troubleshoot equipment. So in this case, I mean, the, the user asks uh, if he has a problem with a, um, a, a beverage dispenser, how to solve that. And then the Gen AI, I mean, this is crossed with the, the Gen AI is paired with information that the company has on the dispenser and he, he can provide them uh, an answer on what could be going wrong on the disp dispenser and how to fix that. We're seeing a lot of this, this is called the and rack technologies, and the retrieval uh, augmented generation, where you couple the Gen, Gen AI engines together with your, your own private information, and you can develop solutions that are tailored for your business. Another case of this is the planogram compliance. We also see an examples of retailers that are using Gen AI to analyze the picture. So you, you take the picture, the picture can be analyzed using computer vision, and then you can give that information to um, a large language model 
that will produce an assessment of the picture and in terms of how to improve the uh, operation or compliance of the planogram. So this is also a pretty, pretty interesting case. So these are the slides that I have to uh, show you, and I will uh, now give the uh, stage to the second presenter. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Nelson. Um, hello, my name is uh, Hilde, and I would like to take a short sidestep uh, into the campaign architecture landscape. Um, in retail, promotions uh, often drives the campaign process with a weekly flyer served as a backbone supported by Excel files and InDesign documents. Uh, but uh, online channels are becoming increasingly important to convey uh, the message. Um, um, and the variety of those channels are also increasing. Uh, on the other hand, uh, campaigns are more and more about a storytelling um, uh, centered around a theme or uh, a social if issue or an event. Uh, and what we see is that retailers want to conduct a targeted campaign. Uh, maybe there's somewhere uh, stock that at a certain location where they would like to get rid of or uh, local customer needs. Uh, but also uh, more and more uh, results will be measured and uh, uh, retailers would like to respond uh, to those results. Um, but over the years, the architecture landscape is built around the dominance uh, of the flyer with corresponding tools, uh, data flows and organization structures. Uh, but um, orchestration is leaking. Um, what we see is that there is a digital, a, a digital asset management system, a product information system, and mostly a content management system. And these, these tools are uh, connecting with each other. Um, but there is a need uh, for a centralized uh, platform with various of teams with, with different requirements uh, can uh, aggregate data uh, to craft the right narrative. Uh, and this platform uh, should uh, support linear as well as agile uh, approaches. Um, um, so, uh, and teams should also be able to start new initiatives uh, to do experiments with uh, probably new channels or, or new things. Um, by adding AI and machine learning in such a platform, uh, the teams uh, will be helped doing their work. Um, um, you can automate actions, uh, but uh, another important thing is that AI can also take on an advisory role within your workflow. Um, I will hand over to Hoos, he will explain more about AI. Yes, Silla, thank you very much. Um, let me see if I can go to the next slide. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, more the, uh, the product side of, of this. Um, we are uh, working for a lot of uh, wholesaler and retail uh, companies, and uh, we are helping them applying AI and data science uh, for what we call smart product data management and AI commerce. Uh, the way that we work is that we work in uh, either projects, so we take a look at the challenges for the customer. Uh, but after a while, we found that we had quite similar requests from our customers. And that's also why uh, we developed our uh, SaaS platform, so Software as a Service, which is called uh, the Power Suite. Um, well, the Power Suite is a set of modules um, which is helping to uh, get really high quality product data, including the, the features of the products including uh, good product descriptions, um, sale optimized, and also good uh, product relations. And uh, well, I think it's the best that I can give you some examples of day-to-day uh, -day use cases that, uh, that we have uh, so that I can show you how you can apply um, AI uh, in, in this situation. Um, so why are we doing this? Uh, because, uh, well, it uh, saves a lot of time, uh, so it saves a lot of costs. But also, um, it delivers a lot of uh, extra uh, revenue. So the return on investments of AI uh, in retail uh, is quite uh, quite high. Uh, there are some of our customers, uh, and where you can see that it, uh, well, it increased 
uh, 80% in, in the orders, 25% in the average order value, 22 to 24% in the increase in the add to cart uh, rate, uh, and also in the search ranking, uh, the uh, increase in, in the traffic to the, to the web shops. Um, so let me just give you some examples, uh, some cases um, which are currently running. So they're all live and, and, uh, and uh, running. Um, that can explain how you can use AI for this. Uh, so the first case is about, um, it's a wholesaler company uh, who is uh, receiving a lot of product data from their suppliers, uh, but they say, well, uh, we don't receive all that information in a structured format. Um, we sometimes receive it as a, just a textual description of the, uh, which is great, but if you want to use um, features, if you want to use this data also to, uh, for example, to filter on your web shop, uh, to do some sorting, um, then of course you need to have those features in, as, as in a structured way uh, in your PIM system, product information management system. Uh, so what we use AI for is that we extract from this textual description, uh, it's a bit small, so maybe you cannot see it, but there's a textual description and our AI is extracting the features from those texts. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of some, with some human in the loop. So that means that a human still has to approve this, uh, but he doesn't have to read it. He doesn't have to type it in into the PIM system. It's being extracted automatically and he only needs to approve it or reject it. So this saves a lot of time, but also gives a lot of extra benefits because all the uh, data then on the, on the web shop site uh, is then available for sorting, for filtering, etc. Um, well, another quite similar case is that we extract uh, this data from PDF files because some we see that suppliers are able to deliver PDF uh, file, and in this PDF file there are a lot of tables and there's a lot of information about the products. Uh, but of course, you don't want this in a PDF file because you want this into your into your e-commerce system, your product information management system, uh, so that you're able also to uh, to filter it, to sort on it again. Uh, so what we have done is that we have uh, developed uh, the AI software, which is able to extract uh, the features from the PDF files. There's a small example. So all the, the green and the orange ones are the, the features that we are able to extract from the PDF in the top right corner. And again, you can approve it or you can reject it. And the nice thing is, is that the system also learns from your input, so it improves while you're using it. Another source you can use and to extract is, uh, is images. Um, sometimes there's a lot of information in an image um, and that is information that can be quite valuable if you wanna use this uh, into your uh, product information. Uh, so this is an example of, of a dress. Um, and the first two, the, the brand and the product name are from the name itself. Uh, but the color, the pattern, the sleeve length, the length in, in total, and the closure color type ways, those are all things that are extracted by AI. So that means that uh, you don't need a, a human doing this. Um, uh, a supplier can just deliver uh, a good image of the product and a lot of this information can be extracted automatically. And the last one for this um, uh, extraction of features is that we can use uh, the internet. Um, because, uh, well, for a lot of products, uh, there's always a lot of extra information available on other product sites. Uh, sometimes it's a supplier, it might be a competitor. Um, and well, what we did here is that we actually sort of used the, the internet as a sort of uh, BIM system uh, because we are searching then for a product using the EAN code. Um, then we see, okay, we uh, scrape the top five results which, uh, which are returned to Google. And from those websites, we extract the data and we also we convert it to a similar data model, which means that we are able to extract uh, the features you know, based on what is available on the internet. Now, I must say one disclaimer is that if you just use the internet, then uh, yeah, you're not quite sure of the uh, quality because the sources that might be returned might be a very low quality uh, uh, website, for example. Uh, so what we usually do is that we uh, make a list of sort of competitors or a list of suppliers that are sort of like approved. And we know that this information, that information from that web source uh, is usually quite trustworthy. And so then we can use that information to enrich the product data. So this is about enriching the product data. And so it's more on the feature level in this case, uh, but it's really a quite um, a prerequisite, I would say, uh, to do the next steps. And the next steps are more into data quality and are more into uh, text generation. Because if we have the, all the data, then we can also perform some uh, data quality checks. 
Uh, so in this case, this was um, a case from uh, from one of our customers, which had a, a bath grid. Our algorithms are checking every feature of the product to see if it's a likely feature. And we can do multiple checks. And uh, one is that we say, well, in this case, we had a bath grain which had a width of two meters and 35 centimeters, which is a very wide uh, bath grain, which is very strange because if you compare it to all the other bath grains which are in the system, uh, then we see that usually it's a width between 15 and 25 centimeters. So this is really an exception in that. Uh, so those exceptions, we can quite easily uh, detect those, but also some contradiction. For example, there is in the product description, it said it's a 200 grams or something like that. Um, and then we see in a BIM system that it says, well, it's a 150. So 150 is not the same as 200. So either the data in the system is wrong or the data in the description in the type might be wrong. But also if we have this data, then we can make it to, to the next step. And then we can say, well, well based on the products that we have, we're able to automate uh, the generation of uh, product descriptions. There are multiple ways of doing this. Um, I'll show you a couple. Uh, this one is uh, from our solution where we use generative AI, so large language models, LLMs, uh, to generate a product description, uh, which is really great. Um, as a user, uh, you get really a, a good text, uh, but uh, sometimes those large language models uh, have the tendency to hallucinate, so they might make up one sentence which you might not like or might not even be true. So that means that you really have to check the outcome of the output of the uh, large language models. Um, and if you have a sorpent which is not too big, then, it, then it's really perfect. And then you just have to check it and then you can release it and do production and release it to your website. Uh, you can also use some other sources. Uh, for example, in this case, um, if, we, if you have a sorpent which is not really all the time the same, sometimes you have a product like this, this bear. Um, well, you don't want to uh, create a prompt for every product. Uh, so sometimes then we can say, well, we can use the image to actually describe this product. Um, this is also done using generative AI technology. Um, so if you don't have the, the feature data yet, but you do have the picture, uh, of course, you can also use the picture to generate um, some text for it. Uh, sometimes it happens, especially if you have a very large assortment, uh, then you say, well, I really want to make sure that every text that has been generated uh, is 100% correct. Um, so if we use generative AI for this, then I still need to review all those product texts. And if I have an assortment of 100,000 or 200,000 of products, uh, this really becomes quite, a, quite an intensive task to do. Um, so there's also another way of doing this. And this is a template-based uh, system where we say, okay, well, let's see if we can um, uh, use a different method to generate the text, uh, which means that I can define the templates and AI fill that template, but for each template, I can then define certain conditions, uh, which make sure that uh, in the end, um, uh, the text that has been generated confirms those rules. So that means that every text that is produced, that is actually 100% uh, correct. And also you can do this in multiple languages. Uh, so that means that uh, also uh, the text has been produced in multiple languages is also correct in that language. So this is really a suitable way uh, for large assortments uh, because you don't need to check uh, the outcome of it anymore. Uh, also, of course, you can still use the translation options. Uh, there are a lot of AI-based uh, machines um, which are able to translate quite good these days. So that means that I can have a text in one language and then automatically translate it to. And the nice thing is that uh, these days it's also possible to uh, create your own dictionary of words, uh, especially if you have sector specific um, wording in it, then you can say, well, also use those dictionaries to uh, correct the, the machine translations. Um, the next one is about product relations. Uh, the example is in Dutch, so I'll, I'll explain it. Uh, this is a do it yourself retailer, and they saw, okay, well, we have quite a lot of traffic coming from search engines like Google. Uh, and for example, they, they, the, the user must have search for black paint in this case. Uh, well, they click on the first result, search result, and then they come to the website. And then they see, okay, well, this is indeed, this is a black paint, but it's a, uh, I want a uh, black paint, which is more shiny. Um, so actually this is not really the, the, the correct product. So I need to find an alternative product, but people are not taking any effort to, to search on this wipe for, for another product to just go back to the, 
to the search results from Google and click on the second link. So this customer, and they say go away, uh, they have lost then their customer. So if you are able to present also the alternatives, so like, oh, we have this same product, but also in, in, in different colors or whether it's shiny or not, or in a different content, um, then the, the, the consumers are, uh, well, they, they just one click away uh, to the right product. So this, only this uh, already increased their, their revenue with 4.9%. Uh, um, uh, but of course you need to make sure that for each product, you have also a list of uh, related, related product, in this case, variants of the product. And that's exactly what AI can do. So AI can determine from your assortment, this is a cluster of products. And for this particular product, uh, you can vary on, in this case, color and whether it's shiny or not and the contents. Uh, while for another product like a battery, uh, it's about the number of pieces in the package and the type of battery, for example. Uh, so this is something that AI can help you with. Um, uh, quite a similar one is about uh, alternatives. Um, so uh, alternatives and also uh, related accessories. Uh, so in this case, I have a drilling machine and it also has these drills or I have an, an arrow AccuPack, which I can, uh, can use with it. And this is also something that uh, AI is able to detect, either based on the specifications of the product or based on the sales information of those products. And now we are uh, uh, running into the more image-based uh, solutions. Uh, well, with AI technology, we are able to understand what is actually on a picture. Uh, and this is one of our examples that um, we are able to search through products, but not just through the product textual information, but also to the image information. Uh, so we can, in this case, search for a black dress for the office. And in the top results, you see I got black dresses, which are also suitable for the office. But if I search for a black dress for a party, I get different black dresses, which are more suitable for a party than for an office. And there's no metadata available. It's just really um, understanding what is on the image. And uh, well, it's returning that also in the search results. Well, this is a web-based uh, web shop solution. So for, for customers on a, on a, on a web shop, uh, this is also possible to use this internally. In this case, there's a, uh, well, one of the customers has also a large set of, uh, of images they have taken uh, on, on various occasions and they really want to search through those uh, 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 images. So in this case, a Christmas bulb with glitters, well, you get the results, uh, the Christmas bulb with glitters without having to do any, any tagging of this. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insight of what is possible using AI and, uh, on, on text and on features and product data and also on, uh, on images. And uh, well, I'd like to hand over uh, to, the, to the next uh, speaker. Thank you, Hux. Um, so, uh, hi, I'm Paul Walker from Concord. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we leverage AI in an image preparation workflow. So. Let's look at the problem first. As a retailer, you have to continually keep preparing product images. You know, you can have a lot of information, but unless you've got that image that you can push to the website, you know, it's very difficult to sell. So, and you're gonna get them in maybe different formats. You might take the photographs yourselves, you might have them supplied from somewhere else, but generally it comes in all sorts of different formats, resolutions, aspect ratios, inconsistent focus points, and you need to tailor this into a consistent brand format. So I'm gonna take you through this image journey where you have a whole heap of images, and you've got to channel this to your website and potentially your partner's websites as well, because you also wanna project your products onto other partner websites. So you might have a few products. You might have a lot of products. You might have an awful lot of products. And so sourcing the product images is kind of the first, first thing. We use Woodwing Assets to help collect these images. And you might find that the images that you get are a perfect fit. So that the right aspect ratio, the products in the center, absolutely brilliant. You can push these immediately to your website. Generally, that's not usually the case. So this is where we use AWS, Amazon Recognition, and Amazon Bedrock to help leverage AI to analyze the image, work out what's on there, and then for us to be able to push this into kind of some brand consistency out. So let's take a look at this journey. So typically you might get a series of photographs, the photographer or whoever you've got them from has said, here you go, here's some images of your product. Great, thanks very much. 
Well, the first thing is using AI to identify these. So here we have three images, different aspect ratios, and we've used AI to tag what's on there. Now we can use this in comparison to kind of go, well, the first thing we want to do is, well, this image on the left-hand side doesn't contain our product. We shouldn't be using this. And again, you can use this to, to thin your asset estate down so you're only focusing on what you need. What you've then got is your website typically would be uh, fixed on a particular aspect ratio, whatever that aspect ratio might be. You need to prepare these. Now, traditionally, you know, you would send this off to uh, repro houses, have Photoshop jockeys who would cut, slice and dice these images by hand and have those prepped. It's very time consuming. So we use this information from here to then provide a simple crop. So based on a very simple set of rules, we can say, yes, we want a full product shot. We want a uh, kind of close in. What's the best available aspect ratio given on this crop? But then what tends to come in is brand guidelines. So this is where you as a brand want to make sure that your images are consistent. And however you do these images, whatever your main focus is, whatever your focus point is, you need to be able to do this consistency consistently at scale. So now we're looking at more targeted crops. So again, using AI to think, well, when I'm on this particular shot here, I have the, uh, the, the license for the model. So on the, uh, the shot on the left and the shot in the middle, I can either take a close crop of the products. So come in tightly as possible or no, I'm actually interested in upselling shoes as well. So I've already kind of recognized that there is another product inside here, or I maybe don't have the, the license to use this particular model shot. And so again, I will just kind of come in and, and crop closely. And again, being able to do this consistently so that the rules that you provide to the AI, no matter how many images you pour in, we have clients who have, you know, a few hundred um, products to a few hundred thousand products. And then on top of that, you've got all the SKUs. And if you kind of do that multipl multiplication and how many times you might refresh per season, the numbers of images that you have to do this and if you want to kind of grow as a retailer, you need to think about the automate, autom how to automate your image workflow. So essentially, if we can kind of just start to kind of sum this up now, so we could essentially take one image and we can output it in three different ways. So this might be useful when pushing our images out to different third parties. So again, there's our brand guidelines, the partners that you're working with might have slightly different brand guidelines. We also use AI to, and I've not got the examples here, drop the background out. So for example, there are international third parties that you might work with who have a white background. So you can use um, lifestyle shots for your products, but then when you're pushing out to a particular um, a third party, you might then also want to be able to drop the background. Equally, if you're pushing onto to Google, Google, one of the rules Google have is they don't want logos anywhere. So we can use AI to highlight that there might be a logo in shot that you might have to kind of get rid of or at least obscure. And again, we can use the rules to, to kind of do this. So then kind of finally to kind of come to a close on this, um, one of the key things that you know we're now uh, looking at is being able to present tools to uh, retailers where they can offer a real stylized crop. You know, your brand, do you want products in the center? You want products off the center? You want from knee to the top? What padding do you want? So that you can sit there and you can craft the rules and then you can push this out across your entire image estate. So then um, as things do, things change. Your, your website, you might decide you've gone from one uh, aspect ratio to another aspect ratio and to be able to take all of your images and ask the repro team, hey, can you redo all of these again? Instead, if you have a, an AI workflow, you can just push these through again. And each expression of your products to wherever they are in the world, using AI to prep and keep consistency. So really what we're all about is AI for us in our image workflows is about giving you choice at scale.
thank you for listening. I'll now hand back to Magdalena. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, everyone. Um, I have, I'm not sure if everyone noticed, but I have run a, a three quick polls during the uh, webinar. Um, and I would, uh, before we start with the Q&A session, I would like to bring the results forward. So maybe we can have a conversation starter with the participants of the webinar. Um, so we had uh, one of the questions was on uh, the AI usage, um, namely, have you used AI driven tools in your content management strategy before? Um, can you see the, the results? I, I suppose you can on the right side panel. Uh, you can see that almost 50% uh, answered yes, but only minimal usage of AI driven tools and nearly again 50% said no, but planning to which I think and I believe it's a, it's a very good um, uh, conversation starter. Uh, and that gives us a feel of um, what is currently uh, the AI, AI usage uh, stage from our participants in this webinar. And only one uh, participant uh, answered that they do extensively use AI-driven tools in their content management strategies. Um, so I, from the other questions, which are again, interesting to, to look at is, uh, regarding the AI confidence, um, namely the question was around how confident do the, the participants of this webinar feel about using AI to create their marketing copy and images. And if you see, um, the right side panel, I'm showing the results. Now, um, we have a neutral uh, confidence uh, uh, base of uh, mainly of uh, nearly 50% of or 43% of the of the respondents, um, somewhat unconfident uh, and somewhat confident. It's something that uh, we share across 24% of those that responded, and uh, there is only um, one of each respondents of having. A, a very confident feeling about using AI to create uh, their marketing copy and images, and of course, not confident at all. So, um, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, feel free to answer uh, to question. Uh, to <laughs> sorry, apologies. Feel free to ask any questions to our um, speakers today, uh, because all of them shared quite interesting insights, uh, starting with uh, the focus on the use cases of AI technologies and implementations in terms of content management and digital asset management. And the, the last one was the um, AI concerns. So I will show the results on the um, major concerns that the participants that responded to this poll during this webinar have. Um, mainly the majority of answers or 42% is quality control. Uh, and then of course there are ethical concerns, lack of understanding or expertise, um, loss of personal touch and dependence on technology. I would maybe like to bring forward any of the participants that presented uh, today, uh, if not all, to maybe get a, uh, well, get their opinion on this uh, AI concerns uh, uh, poll uh, answers, and maybe we can uh, get a um, the first question in by the time we um, end the discussion. Paul, would you like to probably maybe comment or uh, provide your, um, your insights into the uh, general concerns by the uh, people in this webinar? Yes. Um, so some of our clients have expressed um, concerns and generally it's consistency. Um, so uh, with a lot, so for example, we kind of deal with um, some publishers and the, the way in which they leverage um, AI, uh, that again, they have to be kind of very, very careful how they use it. We've tried to introduce various controls, human in the loop, um, simply. Mm -hmm. so always make sure that... Um, for us, AI is not about you know reducing your uh, headcount. It's about enablement and making sure that as a company, um, you can do more. So with that, you know it's utilizing the people that's there, giving the the company chances to do more, but also providing that uh, kind of layer of oversight, so that when AI, because it's still in its early days, you know does slightly go off the rails. Um, 
you know that you've got plenty of of guardrails to to uh, check it and make sure before it gets anywhere near the kind of the, the the public space and you know there's many different ways of doing this and with you know kind of the image workflows that we do that's a lot easier with uh, kind of the textual based workflows that just kind of needs just a, a few more kind of checks and balances in there but you know all of this everything that we've been encouraged the clients to do you know they've they've kind of you know very much gone for and you know those that are using ai you know are really starting to embrace the, the the benefits that it can give them that's absolutely true and i'm hopeful that many of the participants uh, during this uh, webinar will see the uh, well the value that has been brought by the companies uh, uh, engaged in this uh, webinar presentation and of course can feel free to ask any questions to the participants that we have uh, in the webinar um, I have a again a conversation starter and maybe it's good to uh, bring uh, and ask uh, Nelson to join us um, it's regarding um, the AI evolution or how do how does he see the AI evolving in the field of retail content management in the next uh, couple of years? Nelson, could you share your insights? Yeah, I think, um, um, yeah, there are several things there. I mean, in terms of the content management, we expect to see adoption um, in the large retailers. And we know that they are already trying uh, doing uh, some POCs to see how they can uh, start using uh, AI to to manage content. I mean, also can I can mention what uh, some of the examples that uh, Amazon is doing. Amazon is actually, you have seen probably in the Amazon.com, uh, you're seeing that for instance, today you can see um, uh, a um, review, a summarized review that is done by AI. So, you know, I mean, Amazon has like a thousands of, of reviews for by product. So sometimes for customers, it's difficult to understand Okay, what is the in general the perception of this product? So now we are adding this capability to give you a summarized review based on the content that is on, on the site. So these things are really are helping the customer experience. So most of the things on the area of uh, uh, the content are based on how we can improve the customer experience of the customer to using our site on understanding what are the products. I mean, also, the same is happening with hyper personalization. So how can I understand better the profile of the customer to to uh, do the cross selling and upselling in terms of how, what are the things that are relevant for this customer to to complement with the with the um, uh, uh, products that they're seeing. So these are the two areas that, that we're seeing in the short term that are happening very fast, and we're seeing a strong adoption also from other retailers. That's, uh, that's excellent. Thank you, Nelson. Um, I would like to maybe ask Hilde if she can uh, step forward and uh, possibly answer um, what advice would she give uh, to smaller retailers looking to start using AI in their content management? Um, well, I would like to advise to yeah, start with those parts in the workflow um, um, which uh, can be uh, touched by uh, AI. So, for instance, um, do things with images, um, uh, set uh, automatically uh, a focus point, or do things uh, which will help you uh, to reduce work so you can uh, have more attention uh, to start a cre cre creativity. Uh, within uh, your uh, campaigns, um, so that it could be, yeah, help help you um, uh, doing your work. Yeah. Thank you, Hilde. And now the uh, one question for Hus, and uh, and I think uh, if there are no questions from the audience, maybe we can wrap up the session. And basically, that's um, what's his advice on how to better balance between the AI-generated content and human. Uh, course creativity in content creation and management and what would be his, his advice when companies are approaching to move forward with the AI implementation projects uh, what what should they do first so two questions in one you can choose yeah. <laughs> well, I think about the balance between um, AI generated content and also human generated content uh, well 
if you take a look at the, the text part at least, uh, it was quite interesting. We also did a, a sort of a, 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 a how do you say this, a, a test in, in, in an audience at about 120 people. And we gave them different texts and with the question, is this a text generated by AI or is this text generated by a human? And uh, well, the, the outcome was that basically you could not tell uh, because uh, some people voted for, well, this is an AI, AI generated text while it was a human text and, uh, and vice versa. Uh, so that means that in terms of quality, uh, well, uh, you can really reach a quite high quality level. Um, it, of course, it is also something that, well, relates to, of course, the, the input. Um, if you use generative AI, then you take very much time and, and, and position in, in, in prompting, so in, in the, the prompt that you give to the, uh, to the AI engines, of course, this will really increase uh, your results. Um, uh, if you do this a lot less, of course, results will be more generic and, 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 and less accurate. So this is one thing. And also the other thing is that, well, if you take a look at the, um, the, the, the use case that you're doing this for, for example, we have also a uh, customer which is more in the medical appliances, medical devices, well, it's, it's very important that all the texts are 100% correct because if it's not 100% correct, that might lead to, to other problems further down the line. So this is really important. Well, maybe another customer who has an assortment of a couple of hundred thousand products might say, well, if a couple of percent of my product texts are not 100% correct, it doesn't really matter because they're in household appliances or, or something like that, which, which is, no, that doesn't make that difference that much. So it really also depends on on, uh, on, uh, on your own quality levels and of course on uh, on what kind of business you're in. Uh, so I think that, that that sort of balancing is depending on, on the type of business that you're in and also how good you are in giving instructions to either template based or, or a generative AI based uh, engine. Uh, the other part about implementations, um, it's uh, yeah, I think it's, it's quite common, but uh, this really works quite well. Uh, if organizations are starting to use AI, it's, it's, it might be kind of scary uh, to do this because some people might think they uh, they will be replaced their jobs will be replaced by AI, or, or they have well uh, some very questions about the quality. Uh, is it is it good enough? So basically, what we always say: well, just start. Uh, take a small piece of the business and see how you can use AI for this. And sometimes the results are very good, very promising. And sometimes you say: well, this is not what we expect from it. What we should do. Uh, but do not wait. That's my advice because uh, the, really the technology is really evolving quite at a, at a fast pace. Uh, so that means that you really have to be into experimenting with AI, using AI, because others are doing it as well. And you might uh, have a setback in your, in your competition. So uh, if you still have doubts, just do it in a safe environment, in the sandbox environment, uh, experiment with it, uh, see what it uh, delivers to you. And based on that, take the next step. Perfect. Thank you so much, Hus, for this uh, elaborate uh, answer. Um, and since uh, I don't see any other questions in our chat option, um, I would uh, like to thank everyone, um, every each every one of um, the registrants of the webinar and the speakers. Uh, we covered so many um, interesting topics and use cases, and I'm sure our participants were able to uh, learn from those case studies or use cases. And in case they have any questions, we already shared your contact details during the slides um, presentation. But in case there are any follow-up questions, uh, I advise them to feel free to uh, message us at webinar at Um I'd like to thank you once again with a final slide for this uh, webinar today and uh, hope to see you soon in the next interesting session uh, another uh, group or maybe the same group of interesting speakers sharing their know-how expertise and knowledge from the latest ai technologies implementations in the, the content management um, systems in the retail world Thank you, everyone. Uh, wishing you a lovely rest of the day and uh, hope to see you soon.